Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thanks for joining me today. Just a quick video and I want to share with you guys one of the developments that's come out in the news over the past week and that is a resurgence of scarlet fever and I think we should pay particular attention to this as a harbinger of the resurgence of diseases of old. For those of you who have been following me for some time, you're going to know that this is something I've been talking about for almost a decade now and that is the inevitable resurgence of the eradicated diseases. And I want to cover four points here that I think will influence the way that we prep, or at least should influence the way that we prep. And they are, the first one is the arrogance of the medical establishment. The second is the cyclical nature of progress. The third is the unchecked expansion in lifespan and population. The fourth is playing God and the genome. I do want to make a caveat here on the third point, because immediately people are going to have like a guttural response. I am not a eugenicist, and I believe that human beings were created in the image of God. And I don't think that humans are a problem, but I think we have to be honest statistically about the change in lifespan and about the expansion in the sheer number of human beings as it relates to a relative risk factor for massive disease spread. So the first is the arrogance of the medical establishment. And really since the 1920s, we have experienced in the Western world, uh, arrogance doesn't even begin to cover it, just power drunkenness of the white coat medical establishment. I'm not talking about individual physicians, nurses, and healthcare providers, because I've personally worked with several who were just honest and good people who wanted to make good decisions for their patients and recommendations based on evidence. And I obviously am supportive of that. But the medical establishment in general has a tendency towards consolidating power to behaving in a very cult-like mentality Furthermore, it has a tendency towards resolidifying superstitions and old world religion in a very unchallengeable and, and strict hierarchical structure. Why does this have anything to do with scarlet fever? So an article, I'm going to link to it in the description box below, that came out this week, essentially brought light to a microevolutionary adaptation in the bacteria that cause scarlet fever because these bacteria had been infected by a virus which fundamentally altered their genetic structure and gave them an adaptation into becoming more effective at infecting people, basically. The medical establishment since the 1920s and 30s had really become very arrogant and boasting about, oh, through the work of our hands, through the work of our hands, we've created this world, a diseaseless society, and you know, we've eradicated this, these diseases, which is so incredibly historically myopic that only a person who had a very, very short-sighted short -sighted view of the narrative of human history could come to such a conclusion. But the medical establishment took credit for a lot of things that really it didn't do. Uh, the medical establishment took credit for, for instance, eradicating things like smallpox and polio, when really, if you look at it, while it could have been potentially part of the equation for sure, I think that's an easy point to argue. It was not the totality of the equation. Advancements, obviously, in public sewage, sanitation, uh, building codes, for instance, ventilation codes, all of these have a great degree of impact when it came to transmission of disease and subsequent infectious disease rates. And and death rates from coming from that. But the medical establishment now in looking at these developments with scarlet fever has, instead of recognizing its place throughout history, has persisted in the mindset of playing God. Because now, at least from the articles that I have read, and at least the ones that I'm going to reference to you, the mentality is that because the genetics have changed with this virus, or excuse me, the genetics have changed with this bacteria via virus infecting it, we're going to gene edit our way out of this problem. Which to me is so dangerous and creates in its way a myriad of unintended consequences that I think we would be remiss not to point out the danger inherent with this particular response. It reminds me actually of the Jurassic Park um, quote from Jeff Goldblum who played his character. Your scientists were so busy trying to think or determine whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think whether they should. And so since scarlet fever has come back and since its genes have essentially changed and adapted, the answer from the medical community and the science world that gets all the taxpayer money through grants, et cetera, et cetera, and cocktail hour, their response has been, we're just gonna go into the building blocks of life and we're gonna splice and dice and chop them up and then we're gonna figure out a way to, to perpetuate the next kicking of the can down the road. In, in eradicating this new virus. So to me, 
looking at it this way is very dangerous. For the second point that I want to cover with you, with you guys today is the cyclical nature of progress. I'm going to give you a potential so solution here, or at least what I think we should consider as a solution instead of gene editing our way out of this. The cyclical nature of progress. Most human beings, unfortunately, nowadays, because we are constantly bombarded with content and entertainment, human beings nowadays are not any more enlightened, I submit to you. If anything, we are, we are slovenly and more stupid and we act like fish in a fishbowl, utterly oblivious to the past and completely unaware of the present and uninterested and disinterested in the future. Most human beings are living this way. They're living for Netflix. They're living for Uber Eats. They're living for, for the fleshly desires and they don't understand and have no desire to grasp where they sit throughout the totality of the space time continuum in human existence. They're like, yeah, whatever. I know what happened for the past thousand years, or maybe I don't, but I don't care. I'm interested in what's on Netflix right now. So because human beings, especially um, the groundswell of the voter base now, doesn't really care about anything other than getting their, their social entitlements and their entertainment, really, we're setting up to have a politically mobilized, scientific, totalitarian regime take over things in the same way that they have right now we've seen with the corona bit. Uh, we, we have seen an unparalleled level of power being transferred from the people and their elected representatives into the hands of unelected bureaucrats with medical degrees. And that's a very scary thing when you consider it because they are only captive to whatever code of ethics or whatever cocktail hour approved behavior is suitable for them at the time. They don't have accountability to the voter. And so there's an incredible amount of damage that can be done very, very quickly due to the myopic nature of the voter and due to the unchecked power of the medical establishment. The third point here I want to talk about in relation to the resurgence of these old diseases is the unchecked expansion in lifespan and human population. Now, I'm again, I stress this because people love to twist it around. I am not a eugenicist. I love people. That's why I became a nurse. Well, for the most part, <laughs> I care about people and I want people to live and have happy lives and be fulfilled individuals and actuate their potential. But what we can be honest about from the numbers standpoint alone is that since the grid infrastructure, electricity, public water availability, sanitation works, since the installation of this en masse throughout the world in developed countries, the population around the world has really taken off and not necessarily in the countries where these advancements in public water and works, etc., have been installed. But we have seen an exponential increase in human population. We've seen an increase in the average lifespan of humans and really a corresponding increase in chronic disease that comes with it because people are living longer now but they're living sicker longer. They're not living well longer. They're living sicker longer. So we have to be honest about this milieu that we're in. We have to be honest about the environmental circumstances and where we're at throughout history. Most of us, if you're watching this channel, odds are, for the most part, that you have lived, a, unless you've lived in a developing country, like a, a country where there is no running water and sanitation, most of us have lived in a bubble of health a disease-free, communicable disease-free bubble. There are obviously exceptions, seasonal flu, cold, etc. But most of us have not known seasonal and sweeping epidemics of old like our ancestors did 150 to 200 years ago. The population that exists now is sicker. They're at an increased risk for contracting these diseases. And really, they are the they're the least fit population to adapt and overcome from uh, a, a corporal, a bodily health standpoint, probably that's ever existed on the planet. I don't know how you prove that, obviously, but when you consider these diseases coming back, the rate at which they will spread when they come back is probably going to be staggering. They are probably, and I made a, a video about this, what, eight, ten years ago, about who will die first when the poop hits the fan, and people thought it was some sort of psychopath or something, but no, I mean, this is just being honest with history and the facts in front of us. When these diseases come back, they're going to affect people disproportionately who have chronic disease, who are unwell, who have been neglectful of their health, who have eaten horribly, and who have lived lifestyles of complete risk-taking and ultimate abdication of the responsibility of their own health. And so I think that it behooves us to go back to the basics. 
So when we return to the first point here about the arrogance of the medical establishment, instead of seeing the error of their ways, like interdicting nature and trying to flip the rules of nature over, yeah, it can work. Yeah, you can create a safe space, but it's only going to last for a few decades. So instead of learning the lesson about the scales and the balance of nature, it seems to me that they're doubling down on a, a flawed and failed methodology. Instead of recognizing what system this flip-flop is occurring in, which is nature, and that nature has its own inherent checks and balances, and that because we're dealing with dynamic and living organisms, these trends have an origin point, but they also have a counterbalance. Instead of looking at it honestly and objectively, I think at this point they're just saying, yeah, whatever, we're just going to go in and try and, and cut off the, the chain on the scale. You know, you see the old scales, you know, where they have the weights and then the chains that hold them on the fulcrum. They're looking with this genetic editing thing to come in and like cut it right here. But I submit to you that's not the answer at all. The answer is to look at the counterbalance in nature and see what is it. And I submit to you that if we're dealing with dynamic and living organisms that are changing, then the answer is also the dynamic and living organisms that are changing. And that is the plant kingdom over here with herbs and with nutrition. So I think the best way going forward is to really pay attention to these things and to embrace a holistic methodology in, in disease management and in prevention. The fourth, playing God with the genome is the last thing I think we should do, but it is unfortunately what is happening right now because of the almighty dollar sign, because of funding, because of grants, because of cocktail hour, and ultimately because it further entrenches and, is, and expands power to the medical industrial complex at a time when they desperately need it, which in the midst of everything we've seen right now this year in 2020 with the, with the whole pandemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, we've seen that power expands in the hands of, of governments and it is stolen or at least abdicated on the part of the individual. And so I think if we're going to be honest and wise moving forward, we can't play the same hand of cards that got us into this position in the first place. We have to be creative and honest about our limitations as human beings and be very careful about unintended consequences. When we start going and editing genes, we're asking for trouble here. We're, again, we're not talking Mendelian genetics about pea plants and purple flowers versus pink. We're talking about splicing and dicing the fundamental essence of life on this planet. In the future, Lord willing, I'm going to be launching another online course talking about herbal and nutrition management because I think that this is going to be something very, very important in, in the times to come. Herbal support of health is going to be critical, I think, in the months and years to come. Whether from a financial standpoint, healthcare being the, or excuse me, um, self-care being the new healthcare, or from a necessity standpoint, because of upheavals and cultures and breakdown and rule of law and potentially catastrophic economic fallout of everything that we've seen. I think we're going to have to really own the diligence aspect of educating ourselves. And a lot of you already have. A lot of you have actually already taken my online course, The Fundamentals of Medical Prep, which if you haven't, you definitely should. It's $129. It's four hours. You get a downloadable workbook. And you can find that at thepatriotnurseacademy.com. And I'll put a link in the description box below for you guys there. You can take it at your own pace. Investing in yourself is always going to be a good move, I think. Investing in yourself and in your own knowledge base, that can't be taken away from you. Even, God forbid, should you lose everything that you own, what you've got up here, that stays with you and that goes with you regardless of where you're at, regardless of whether you're stuck overseas or you're stuck at home or everything that you have is suddenly for naught. You still have it because you invested in yourself. So let me encourage you guys to do that. I know it's kind of heavy, but that was just what's on my heart today. I hope it was helpful for y'all. If you did enjoy the video, I hope you'll subscribe to me here on YouTube, Patriot Nurse. You can also support me on Patreon, Subscribestar, Cryptocurrency, and PayPal. I got links in the description box below. For those of you celebrating Feast of Tabernacles, Hagsukot Tameach, have a wonderful weekend, you guys. Be blessed in everything that you do. May the Lord bless you and keep you all. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.